I'm Jeff Smith, Executive Director of EDA New South Wales. We're right in the midst of a once in a generation change to planning laws in New South Wales. Uh, we're at the white paper stage, which is the penultimate stage before we go to a new bill. And uh, the government has been consulting on planning law changes for about the last 12 months or so. Uh, well, it's a wholesale reform package. Um, when the government went to the election, they said that this was, uh, there was a need to reform the planning laws and also a need to restore the community's confidence in the planning laws. So it covers everything from the objects of planning law to plan making procedures to what happens at the development stage to how we enforce those. The primary drivers for planning law in New South Wales in the 1970s was a system that was driven on the one hand by complexity and also corruption. So the then Labor government introduced those reforms to both simplify the system and place it on a place planning on a legal, transparent and accountable footing. Um, so we've had 30 years of planning in New South Wales and the system has become increasingly complicated once again, and also in many respects politicised. So we've come full circle and the government has recognised the need to revise and review our approach to planning. We were born from planning 30 years ago based on the importance of community involvement in planning law and the importance of the public interest. Now those were important considerations 30 years ago and are no less important today. So we're in the business of ensuring that planning laws have fulsome community involvement and that the public interest is taken into consideration along the way. And of course that the environment is protected. There are a number of aspects to the planning laws which uh, we do support. Um, perhaps the primary one is a laudable emphasis on upfront strategic planning. Um, that emphasis providing that it's properly uh, uh, financed and supported um, has the potential to result in positive environmental and planning outcomes. Uh, the other aspect is the commitment of the government to enshrining community participation rights in a charter under the legislation. Um, and if that commitment is met, then that will be another feature of the new legislation. One other positive aspect of uh, the planning reforms is the attempt to integrate land use planning with the provision of infrastructure. It's been a long time since any government has attempted that. And uh, if they can achieve that, that will be a very positive feature of the new planning system. And finally, uh, there is a real attempt to ensure that enforcement provisions are modernised and brought into the 21st century. There are a number of real and fundamental concerns about the direction of the planning reforms. The, the emphasis on upfront strategic planning has been achieved at the diminution of the rights to the community and the protection of the environment. Uh, there is a real potential there, there for a focus on strategic planning to be an inherent good um, and a central part of any good approach to planning. However, the approach that the government has taken is to say that that is your opportunity to be involved in the planning law reforms process uh, and by being involved up front, you will have reduced rights further down. So that's a real concern to us. Another uh, negative aspect to the planning reforms is the environment is in many respects relegated. Um, the focus of the planning reforms is very much on uh, emphasising development and being target driven. But none of those targets are environmental targets. There's no environmental bottom lines, which is what we would like to see. And also, Many of the environmental safeguards have been done away with and there are the checks and balances that we would like to see in any system that properly emphasises the role of the community and the protection of the environment. 
I think in many respects the rights and entitlements and responsibilities of people under planning law in New South Wales have been first class. Um, what this new system will do is in many respects uh, place a clear emphasis on people being involved up front uh, and hopefully that will be a proper and useful exercise for people to be involved in. However, the uh, quid pro quo for that involvement up front is that you won't have the opportunity to be involved further down the track. So that's uh, essential that the community is involved in the planning laws um, when they're turned on in New South Wales. The clear tenor of these reforms is uh, 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 an opportunity to be involved up front um, because you won't have the same rights further down the track. The government has said uh, on many occasions that it, it, it's uh, the involvement of the community is fundamental to the process and fundamental to the success of their reform package. Um, so presumably they will uh, resource these reforms properly and uh, people will be given the opportunity to be involved uh, in the ways that they are familiar with, but also in new ways that pick up on uh, more e-planning and information age opportunities to be involved. Well, this has been a long running process and we're now getting to a point where there's a need to assess the devil in the details. And that's obviously where EDO New South Wales has a key role to play. At the moment, we're looking line by line through the draft bill and the white paper to assess whether uh, the sentiments that the government has previously uh, uh, committed to are being reflected in the draft bill. The community in New South Wales is unlikely to have another chance at this for a considerable period of time, so it's vital that they get involved now.